Hello guys, a very good morning to all of you. Myself Neha Gupta, your mentor for current affairs. So I welcome you all in this video, which can help you in clearing your phase one of RBI, SEBI, and NAPAR. So let's begin this video. Now, in the beginning of this video, I have two announcements to make. First is for the NABAD students who have their examination on September 7th. Now, guys, understand this point that from September 1st to September 7th, the current affairs are not important for you. So you can uh, clearly save your time by not watching this video. But listen to me first, then close the video. So what I was telling you that save your time and put this time, put this week into revision because revision holds the key to your success. So you have GA, you have ESI and ARD in your merit section. And these three theoretical subjects can only be cleared when you have done the revision thoroughly. Okay, so you have to put attention to the revision. The next thing that I wanted to say to all the students is guys focus on the spotlight of May, June, July and August. Do not skip any of these spotlight because the four months these four months are very crucial however i tell you to prepare the six months but if you haven't prepared it so far you are definitely not going to prepare it again so what you can do is you can utilize the time period that you have been given to revise or prepare the spotlight of may june july august at least you have to do this one. now second announcement is for the students who are going to appear for any of the examination rbs and about next year so guys, for you, you need to focus on the concept behind the news because you all know that current affairs which are uh, six months prior to the notification date are important or the examination date. So we try to focus on the uh, six months current affairs. So from now onwards, what you can do is you can develop an understanding of the current affairs or on the things which are in news. Why are they in the news? What is the concept behind it? What is the background? What is the need of this initiative? All of these factors. Once you start developing that, you will get uh, an opportunity to retain those facts as well okay so these were the announcements that i wanted to make now all the students who have their examination on september 7 guys please utilize your time and prepare hard for the examination because okay so please apna time utilize kijiye waste mat kijiye okay so this is the timetable for rbs sebi and nabad uh, live courses and this is our mobile application which you can download. Okay, so the very first question that we have is which state has launched the Mukhya Mantri Udyami Khiladi Unayan Yojana? So out of these states, the right answer is option A, Uttarakhand. Now obviously you don't have to memorize it as of now because you don't have any examination coming up. So understand the reason behind launching this scheme because you must have noticed this trend many states are nowadays focusing on sports they are giving sports scholarship there are sports schemes and at the national level too we have various schemes that have been launched by the government of india in order to promote sports only so why is it uh, happening so what is the need of it let's understand that first of all let me tell you about this state scheme so Uttarakhand has launched this Mukhya Mantri Udyaman Khiladi Unayan Yojana and this is a sports scholarship to be given to the meritorious student. Why do we need to give scholarship to the students, especially for, uh, for uh, an activity which students like the most, children like to play. Why do we need to give them extra money? The reason behind this is we have a very basic adage in India that is so what is this? This is the ideology of Indian uh, parents or I would say the entire society of India that we still think that there is no future in uh, sports. So in order to encourage children and their parents to, uh, to put their children into sports, this scholarship has been given and plus this scholarship would also help the parents to arrange the necessary accessories for their children so that they can pass it, participate in the sports okay so that is why such scholarship schemes are uh, being undertaken for promoting sports in india in order to encourage the parents as well as children because this would act as a motivation for children they are getting something in return for doing what they like to do that is to play okay now at the national level so at the national level, first of all, I have this Fit India movement. Understand this point that this movement does not or uh, does not uh, 
have anything to do with the sports promotion it is basically to promote the healthy lifestyle but still it is also a dimension of sports it helps you keep you, uh, it keeps you healthy if you are engaged in any kind of sports you are uh, there are high chances that you will stay healthy for a longer period of time so that is also a dimension of sport and it was recognized by the government of india or prime minister you can say narendra modi who started this movement in 20 19 so the fit india movement aims to encourage you to eat healthy to do exercise do yoga and everything that can help you maintain a healthy balance of your life and your body now as far as the sports are concerned so we have at the national level khelo india games so the khelo india games has three variants youth university and winter now, why have we organized this kind of initiative, this kind of tournament in India itself? The reason behind this is to tap the potential of children at the very early age through these uh, Hello India championships. First of all, the students get an opportunity to participate in the uh, different championships and win the exciting prizes. And secondly, the state or the schools are also able to recognize the sports talent among these students therefore it helps them to groom the children for later tournaments okay so that is why we have organized the Khelo India championship youth is for school level university is for college and winters game winter games have been organized to give a push to the winter sports in India we have hardly uh, a very few takers of the winter sports if you talk about the winter olympics we do not have any significant participation in the winter olympics and if we talk about the winter paralympics so we have none from india who participates in the winter Par paralympics so winning a medal is a far-fetched dream so winter sports is in a very precarious situation in india and it needs to improve therefore hello india winter games have been organized now the duty of you all is you need to know that where was the last edition of these games organized and who was the winner? One more initiative is being conducted or is uh, being implemented by the Ministry of uh, Sports and Youth Affairs and that is the top. It is the target Olympic podium scheme which basically gives every kind of facility to the athletes who have the potential to win a medal in Olympics. That is the basic idea. Now from here, I want to ask a question where, where uh, are the next Olympics being organized? This is your task. 2024 Olympics, kaha organized honge? This is your question. Do mention it in the comment section below. Okay, the next question that we have is, which bank has launched the Mahadhan Varsha fixed deposit scheme? So here, Bank of Maharashtra is the right answer. Now guys, launching a new kind of fixed deposit scheme, launching the new uh, loan rates or changing the loan rates or fixed deposit rates. This is a daily banking business. So it has nothing to do with any kind of concept. It is just a factual news. So for the time being, you can leave it here only. It is just for your information that the banks are nowadays releasing the fixed deposit schemes with specific names. Like we had the Bank of Baroda, Tiranga, fixed deposit scheme we have the sbi fixed deposit scheme which has a very specific name especially for the 75th independence day you have to tell me the name of sbi's new fd uh, scheme which sbi launched for the 75th year of independence day okay so such schemes are launched such fixed deposit scheme uh, uh, fixed deposit features are launched by the banks but understand this point that now the banks have also adopted this naming phenomenon so it is a hindi language name mahadhan varsha fixed deposit scheme okay that is all apart from this there is nothing much to this news moving ahead which of the following is india's largest airline in india with a market share of 55.5 percent as of january 2022 so here why is this question here when it is stating a date of january 2022 so it is you can say define both the assumptions given by me firstly six months prior to the examination and secondly it's the current affairs video why are we studying uh, news which is as stale as of january so here wait friends picture baki abhi pehle know the answer it's indigo so indigo is the largest airline of india and indigo was in the news because it has joined 
a new initiative of world economic forum that is why that question was there okay now how can you cater to such questions if you have read this statement in spotlight you can uh, you must have paid attention to this bracket uh, where it is written that indigo is the india's largest air carrier from this information only you could have targeted this question if this question had been in your examination okay although this statement was not provided in the spotlight magazine this exact statement with 55.5% market share this was not given in spotlight of january as well as of august but the fact that indigo is india's largest airline is provided so from the common sense you can cater to such questions and this is a teaching for the nabard students as well who have their examination on september 7 and who are still sitting in the video okay so the initiative is named as clear skies for tomorrow okay so it is the name of this initiative and it was launched in 2019 and basic uh, purpose of this is to use sustainable aviation fuels now sustainable aviation fuel is basically the flexi fuel or the blended fuel okay so this fuel that will be used in the airlines the purpose is to uh commercialize the production of sustainable aviation fuel by 2030 and by 2050 make the entire aviation industry the net zero emission industry so this statement guys is a static statement this is important and in fact this entire slide is your static general awareness this clear skies for tomorrow initiative there is such kind of initiative that specifically talks about the aviation industry to make it sustainable and net emission free so this is important and this needs to be learned by you all okay now this initiative has 80 members and these can be increased in the future so that is not a very important statement for you as of now the next question is who has been elected as the international treasurer of the parliamentary association conference at the 65th commonwealth parliamentary association conference in halifax canada so here anurag sharma is the right answer and he is the mp from jhansi okay member of parliament from jhansi and he has been elected as the uh, international treasurer at the parliamentary association conference so so it is a very basic simple news of an appointment so that is all to this news apart from this there is nothing much now this is a very interesting question with which country does angola not share its land border so what is the right answer here the right answer is option b gabon now where does this question stem from you will understand it once you read the news so joao los uh, lorenzo has won a second term as the president of angola and this is the news guys from where i made that question so here what i want to do is i want to open up your mindset do not just focus on what is written in front of you in the spotlight try to find out other things as well regarding the news okay because your curiosity will help you clear the examination and will widen your horizons as well now coming back to the question so this is the map angola is a is an african country and these are the countries which surround angola and do remember the republic of congo also share the land border with angola this is a part of angola itself okay so these are the countries surrounding the nation what is the capital and currency of this country this is your question that you need to tell me. next question is who has won the only gold medal for india at the world under 20 wrestling championship 2022 so here guys antim pangal is the right answer so if you i see this pangal surname with anyone you can associate that person with wrestling but with caution okay don't do this blindly uh, however in my opinion as out of my experience i'm saying that every member of the pangal family every sports person of the pangal family is largely associated with wrestling only so this antim pangal or uh, is a wrestler and he has won the only gold medal in this wrestling championship which took place in sofia which is the capital of bulgaria okay 
So understand this point that wrestling is held in three formats. There are only three formats of wrestling. Freestyle, Greco-Roman and women's freestyle. Okay, so this is another category altogether. So we have freestyle and Greco-Roman as two types of wrestling uh, or you can say the methods of playing this sport. So in these three categories, we have the countries which have scored the uh, first rank or which have won the me maximum medals. So men's freestyle, Iran is first and India is third. In men's Greco-Roman, Iran is first, whereas India did not get any rank. And in women's freestyle, India is at the second position. The only gold medal was won by this Antim Pankha. Next question is, with which company has Athletics Federation of India partnered to support women athletes of the country, especially youngsters? So it is HSBC India. So this HSBC India is... Uh, you can say is a company which offers different kind of so kinds of services like investment, banking, financial services, every kind of services are offered uh, by this HSBC India. Which country is the uh, does this con uh, company originate from? This is your question. Okay, where is the global headquarter of HSBC? This is your question. Do tell me in the comment section below. As far as this news is concerned, so it is nothing much. It's like Athletes Federation of India and HSBC India. These two organizations have collaborated so that they can provide support to the women athletes. Next question is, who has won the men's singles at the uh, 2022 BWF World Championship in Tokyo? So Victor Excelson, whenever you see this name, obviously our mind goes to him. It is, uh, he is the top ranking badminton player as of now and he belongs to Germany. So he has won the singles at this championship and the women's singles has been won by Akane Yamaguchi. A very, I would say, very easy name to associate this person with the country that is Japan. So she is from Japan. Now, a very important or I would say a milestone has been achieved by India and that is Swastik Sairaj, Ranki, uh, Ranki Reddy and Chirag Shetty. These two people have won the men's doubles medal, bronze medal in the men's doubles and it is India's first ever bronze medal in the men's doubles category in the BWF World Championship, Badminton World Championship. Okay, So that is also important. Now, the, the next two questions are about books only. So, who is the author of the Hero of Tiger Hill book? So, here Yogendra Singh Yadav is the right answer. So, he has served as the captain in the army and uh, he has written this, the Hero of Tiger Hill, okay, book. Who is the author of Indian Banking in Retrospect, 75 Years of Independence? So here the right answer is Ashutosh Ravikar. Now, if you guys are getting excited to read this book, then I would say you are a true banking aspirant. You want to know, you have the curiosity to know the journey of the banking system in India since the last 75 years. So understand this point. If you don't have your examination coming up, so do give a read to this book because this book is written by a very eminent person, he is serving in RBI, in the Department of Economic Research. So do read, give a reading to, to this book. It will open up your mind. Okay. So he's the director in the Department of Economic Policy Research. Okay. So that is all for today's session. I hope you have enjoyed the session. If you want to add on to something, you can do that in the comment section below. Thank you so much. Have a good day and prepare hard for your examination and also one advice from my side, please guys try to open up your mind, try to arouse your curiosity. Just do not focus on clearing the examination by mugging up the fat. That won't help you. Okay. So that is all for today. Thank you so much.